So we've talked about the different types of sensory receptors in terms of different stimuli that can trigger them, um, cause them to respond and send a signal to your central nervous system. I wanna do a little bit more on somatosensory specifically. So these are um, mechanoreceptors that are located primarily um, in, your, in your skin or the, the layers of your skin, um, as well as in the muscles themselves. So somatosen sensation, the conscious types of, often conscious um, types of, of touch. So first, a learning check. Um, first two are categorizing sensory receptors. So based on where they are, and they describe three types of sensory receptors based on stimulus. There's more than three options. Sensory transduction, describe in your own words as best you can. And then this last one, free nerve endings or something else. Okay, so if you remember, sensory receptors can either be um, free nerve endings or unencapsulated or be capsulated. Special senses are a little different. There's often a separate cell. Um, so, and we'll see actually one of those as an example of somatosensory as well. Um, most general senses, meaning the somatosenses, so all the types of touch, um, stretch, pressure, um, movement and position of our limbs, most of those are one of these two. Okay, so let's look at these. Make that smaller and clear. Okay, so here are um, the types of somatosensory receptors that are located in the skin. There are two other types um, that are not in the, in the skin that I'll, I'll get to in a moment. So these are also in your, in your book in, in a table format. And these are all responsible for detecting different types of stimuli. And this is based on the structure that they have, right? So structure determines function. Um, we'll see examples of that. First, let's start simple. So free nerve endings. This is the ones, this is, this is those. So unencapsulated. Um, there's no special structure there. Um, we're just detecting via, there are gonna be like mechanoreceptors or um, special proteins at the end of the cells that detect. So it can either be um, pain, so nociceptors, RA type, temperature. So this is thermoreceptors, thermoceptors, thermoceptors. Um, and there's some form mechanical as well. So there's some mechanoreceptors that detect touch just with free nerve endings. So you'll notice here, this is like kind of like dendrites. They're not actually dendrites um, because they are not, not the same thing. They're not attached to a um, cell body, but it is where a signal comes in. These are sensor receptors. So um, nerve endings is what these are called. And some of these nerve endings for, for different ones are specialized a little bit more. Here's then the sensory nerve. Um, this is going to travel this afferent signal in what type of neuron is this? So this is here, our free nerve endings, sensory nerve, and it's gonna go, just going this way, towards the spinal cord and synapse in the dorsal horn. And this is the ganglia, dorsal root ganglia. Ganglion is one. So that's where we, that's where we are, putting that into context. I'm not gonna do that for each one of these. Okay, um, so 
I've also mentioned before, so this is a lot of this was in your skin chapter as well. It's, it's listed in both chapters. Your um, hairs actually have sensory net endings around them that detect when your hair moves. It's kind of all I want to say about that. Um, this is a type of external receptor for sure, right? Because um, these are always outside the body versus there can be free nerve endings other places as well. So this is both inside the body and out, extero and internal, intero, extero only. Um, and this is a type of mechanoreceptor, I will write that. So it's detecting movement, mechanical stimulus. Okay, now we've got the more specialized ones. I'm gonna change color here just to um, break things up. So down here, we've got what's called tactile discs. So tactile means um, to touch. And these tactile discs are an example where there's a separate cell um, separate from the sensory neuron. So there's a Merkel cell. That's what this is. It's actually a specialized. What do you think? Can you see in here what kind of cell a Merkel cell might be? It's an epithelial cell, modified epithelial cell um, that is then connected um, physically to a nerve terminal. So here is the sensory nerve. There's another word, it's funny, this, this figure has um, them called different things. Sensory nerves, the same thing as a afferent nerve fiber. I think here, because it's the same, no, I actually, no, I think it, <laughs> It's because um, I don't really, that's not really worried about that. Okay, these two things together, the Merkel cell plus this terminal is the tactile disc. So it's like tactile disc is a functional thing that's going to detect and start information flow to the central nervous system. Um, these are also mechanoreceptors and exteroreceptors. Right, so they're detecting out um, on the skin surface. They are detecting low frequency vibration. Low frequency vibration. And so that is then a type of mechanoreceptor. Right, make that make sense instead of memorizing both things. Vibration is movement. That's not temperature. Could be painful, but probably not, and that would be other receptors that would detect it if it becomes painful, if it reaches that kind of a threshold. Okay, um, I'm gonna change my color again and tell you about these deep ones down here. So again, now we're getting more specialized. We've got three here that have specialized structures. Um, these ones are bulbous, bulbous corpuscles. You can see this um, capsule that is surrounding these sensory dendrites that allow these corpuscles um, to respond to stretch. Does that kind of make sense? This is also a type of mechanoreceptor. These are located in the skin, so dermis which is shown here, also in the joint capsules. So a way of detecting your joint position. Okay, let's go to the lamellar corpuscles. These are also called um, vicinian corpuscles. I know we love like more names for everything, don't we? Um, so these are deep in the dermis, not as deep as, as bulbous actually, but, but deeper than some of the other temperature, pain, et cetera. Layers of collagen fibers. So specialized structure um, that allows these to respond to deep pressure right, opposed to some of the other less deep pressure. 
um, and some stretch and high frequency vibration. And this is because of the, the layers of collagen fiber, fibers separated by um, fluid. Okay. Then lastly, we've got tactile corpuscles, not to be confused with tactile discs. Actually listed right there, um, but I'll label it up here as well. Tactile corpuscles. So these guys are a little bit more superficial in the skin, as you can see. Um, they are in the papillary dermis, actually. And they, especially in sensitive places like the fingertips and lips, right, where you have high um, sensitivity in small receptive fields, which I'll get to, they respond to light touch, which makes sense. Those are places where we can detect light touch and want to be able to have um, precision and sensitivity. Um, some vibrations as well. Okay, that is, those are the somatosensory receptors. The ones that are located in the skin. There is one, two more I want to mention. I'm gonna make them in red because they are associated with muscles and tendons. So one is muscle spindles. Um, you will see these with reflexes. Um, these are going to detect muscle contraction and, and stretch, so the length of the muscle. This is a type of mechanoreceptor. Then there are also Golgi tendon organs. These are in the tendons and they detect stretch of the tendons. So you can imagine these would be typically activated at the same time as muscle spindles. Um, similar ideas, right? But one's located in tendons, one muscle spindles. We'll look at muscle spindles more closely with the reflexes. Okay, one more thing about somatosensory receptors. Um, I wanna talk about receptive fields. So this um, is related to idea I've, I've shown you, it's related to the sensory homunculus. So actually, let me show you that first since I have shown you that before. Um, my mouse to work. This is the idea that the amount of cortex devoted to certain body regions, both in terms of sense and motor um, is corresponds to the amount of, of precision we have either in terms of detecting or controlling that region. We're talking about sensory right now. So let's use that as our example. Um, you already know that your, your lips, your fingertips um, are more sensitive and there's more precise detection of stimuli, right? So you can, feel what things are a lot more, a lot better. That's because there are more, there's more cortex devoted to those regions. Um, and that's what this sensory homunculus, this little man is, exaggerates the more sensitive areas of the body. Less sensitive areas are mapped to smaller areas of the cortex. In terms of motor area, this relates indirectly because this is an upper motor neuron, we'll get back to that. Um, to motor unit size, right? So the areas where there's large motor units, so let's say like thigh right here, there are fewer motor neurons ultimately synapsing onto a thigh muscle, that muscle organ, because the motor units are larger. Um, so you actually need less cortex because cortex corresponds to number of motor units, not size of motor units. You need cortex to control motor unit number, not size. And same with sensory. So just to generate power, um, we don't need a lot of cortical 
area. It's on off. So the visual of this for, for sensory is receptive fields. So if you have, let's just like separate this thing in two, and this is going to be our, um, let's say lips or fingertips. And on the other side, it's going to be our thigh or back. So two regions where you don't have high sensitivity um, and you do have more power, there's more muscle mass and you wanna be able to generate force. So how this looks is for the thigh or back, um, let's just draw three nerve endings here. So the area, let me draw two of them, two sets of free nerve endings. What I'm showing here is the area that is encompassed by a single sensory neuron. That's a receptive field. These are large receptive fields. So for this whole area of the thigh, we need two neurons, sensory neurons, and let's say, let's just um, say that corresponds to X amount of cortex. So like this is a random amount, amount of cortex, somatosensory cortex. We'll look at pathways next. In the lips and fingertips, we need more precision. So instead of having those big old neurons, by big old, I mean a lot of free nerve endings where we might not be able to detect exactly where something is because we're so, we just, our field is too big. Um, instead, we've got these small receptive fields. And they're smaller in terms of area across the skin, is what we're talking about here, whatever region of the skin. So here's, there's two large receptive fields over here, three, four, five, six, six smaller receptive fields. So it takes more cortex to process the information from six cells. Hope that makes sense. So the cortex here, it might even be three times as large, right? Because we three times as many cells. Not sure it's that simple, but more somatosensory cortex. Yeah, that's that sensory homunculus along the brain. Um, in the brain where the amount of cortex devoted to your fingertips and lips is literally larger. So as the other thing is as the size of the um, receptive field gets bigger, the ability to localize a stimulus gets worse. 